Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. When you get a patient who has cervical spine pain, so neck pain in the clinic, sometimes it can be kind of challenging to really focus on the right signs and symptoms and get the right treatment that'll help that patient, right? So to simplify things, they made this rehabilitation approach, this neck pain classification symptoms, where you basically look at how the patient presents and you group them into one of these four classifications or categories. Those are neck pain with mobility deficits, neck pain with movement coordination impairments, cervical radiculopathy, and cervicogenic headache. And once you have them in one of these classifications, it sort of guides how you actually treat them. And so in the next four videos, we're going to be going through each one of these classifications. We'll start with neck pain with mobility deficits. Neck pain with mobility deficits is pretty common and probably one of the easier ones to identify. So here's some common symptoms. They can have central or unilateral neck pain. And they also will have a limitation in neck motion that consistently reproduces their symptoms, okay? So maybe the patient is limited in one direction with rotation, okay? Maybe they're limited in one direction with side bending. Maybe they have limited extension. And every time you do that particular movement that's limited, it reproduces their pain. That's pretty straightforward. They can have some pain referred to the shoulder girdle or upper extremity, but it is not radicular symptoms. If they have radicular symptoms, we're going to put them in class three, and that we'll be covering in a couple of videos. So no radicular symptoms with this. It's just kind of that deep, aching, musculoskeletal pain that is reproduced consistently with a particular movement, and it could be any one of the neck movements. To better understand this, a good example of a condition that actually falls into this classification that almost everybody has had at some point in their life is acute wry neck. Acute wry neck is pretty darn painful, and it really just occurs when you wake up because you slept on your neck wrong. So we probably have all had this experience one time or another where you get up in the morning and your neck is just really stiff in one direction. Normally it's side bending or rotation that's worse. Uh, probably more often side bending. And so let's say you side bend to the left and like, well, that's no problem. But then you side bend to the right and oh my gosh, it's so painful and stiff. Range of motion's limited. You try reproducing that side bending to the right, always reproduces that pain. So that is neck pain with mobility deficits. So what are the interventions for this? Well, number one, is actually a thoracic thrust manipulation. Here's an example of one of them shown right there. So it turns out that thoracic manipulations not only can help thoracic pain, but they can also help cervical pain. So this is really just a pain reduction type of technique. Okay? It's a passive technique, so you would have to follow it up with some kind of therapeutic exercise that the patient can do that reinforces this type of intervention. Now, in terms of the thoracic manipulation, there is a clinical prediction rule for it that we cover in another video. But this intervention for neck pain like this helps literally everybody, regardless of whether or not they fit the clinical prediction rule. So these clinical prediction rules, they're not so much rules, they're more like guidelines, right? I obviously stole that line from a movie. And just because somebody doesn't fit the clinical prediction rule doesn't mean that the therapy won't help them, okay? So it turns out that if somebody has neck pain with mobility deficits, the thoracic thrust manipulations are excellent for pain reduction, excellent. And so that can actually allow you to be able to do a little bit more in terms of the therapeutic exercise or even some types of manual therapy if you just can get that pain down. This is not a permanent solution, and again, you'd obviously have to follow it up with some kind of therapeutic exercise that reinforces what you just did. Then there's also the cervical thrust manipulation. This one over here, which is actually an upsloping rotational cervical manipulation to be exact. Now, this clinical prediction rule 
has four components. Symptoms have to be relatively acute, less than 38 days. Also, a positive expectation that the manipulation will help. Just simply the patient believing that the manipulation will help them actually gives sort of a placebo that actually can help the neck pain reduce and get some mobility back into the neck. Also, if the patient has cervical rotation range of motion, that's a side-to-side -side difference of 10 degrees or greater. What that basically means is if the patient, let's say, going to the left has 75 degrees of left rotation, but then to the right they only have 50, well, that's certainly greater than a 10 degree difference. That would be one check on your clinical prediction rule for the cervical manipulation. And then also, they have pain with PA testing in the mid-cervical spine. Basically, just anywhere around C4, C5, C6. If they have pain with PA testing there, that also rules up using a cervical manipulation. But in general, if somebody has neck pain with mobility deficits, the cervical manipulation is going to be good for that because manipulations, number one, increase range of motion, but they also are going to reduce pain. In general, when you're doing the cervical manipulation, you don't want to rotate into the pain. You can still do the manipulation away from the pain. So if the patient had issues with rotating to the right, you'd probably want to do the manipulation as shown right here because this is going into left rotation. So that's less likely to cause them pain. And remember that manipulations most likely work based on nerves going into the spinal cord. And so you get these neurological effects which help reduce the pain and increase the range of motion. So even though you'd be rotating away from the pain and not mobilizing into the direction that causes the pain, it still can help with the other direction of rotation. Okay. In general, if you're going to manipulate, you probably would do a thoracic manipulation on day one and then use the cervical manipulations later on if appropriate. Generally speaking, unless the patient wants a cervical manipulation, this is probably not something you would want to do on the initial visit. Okay? Um, it can be kind of a sensitive type of movement, so the thoracic manipulation is probably a better choice for day one. And so we obviously don't want to just give passive interventions like the manual therapy manipulations. We also want to give active interventions that the patient can actively do and also take home as part of their homework, their home exercise program. So we also have active range of motion. This is one example of active range of motion. This one's really good um, for neck pain with mobility deficits. And it's basically where you have the patient perform a chin tuck. And while they're maintaining the chin tuck, so active retraction, they basically go through cervical rotation. So they go rotate to the left, and they can hold there, and then come back to neutral while maintaining that retraction or chin tuck, and then rotate to the right and hold there. And you can just go through that over and over again for as many repetitions as you deem necessary. That's really good for this. And then we also have neck and shoulder girdle exercises. Again, these are just examples. There's a lot of them you can use, and you should always match them with the patient's specific impairments. But this one would be a lower trap strengthening exercise. You can also do middle traps, middle traps and rhomboids, which can be strengthened through rows or just simply scapular retractions. Right here, you actually see what looks to be a suboccipital stretch. And then this would actually be the suboccipital stretch that the patient is actually doing on their own. They're actually maintaining a chin tuck to activate the deep neck flexors but they're also stretching those suboccipital muscles, which tend to be tight in a lot of patients with neck pain. Right here, you actually see the deep neck flexor endurance test, which again can be prescribed as a treatment, not just a test, where they're strengthening the deep neck flexors. And then here is a, is a serratus push-up plus. So they're just on a wall, and then they push off the wall, but not just pushing off of it. When they get to the end range, they also protract the scapula. And so that's another exercise that can be done. So in general, neck pain with mobility deficits, thoracic thrust manipulations are great. Cervical manipulations are great. In fact, for acute wry neck, I would say the cervical manipulation is probably the way to go if you know for a fact it's acute wry neck. And then therapeutic exercises like active range of motion and neck and shoulder girdle strengthening exercises. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding 
of class one of the neck pain classification system with mobility deficits. In the next video, we'll be discussing class two, which is neck pain with movement coordination impairments. Make sure to join us then. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.